Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 13 brings with it a lot of new changes and features, but there's a lot of things you can't see that are in the background. And that has to do with optimization and really speeding up and helping the stability of the overall experience. And that goes back to the iPhone SE as well. A lot of people think Apple slows down their phones. And while that may or may not be true based on your battery life, there are a lot of optimizations that should make iOS 13 better than iOS 12. So I wanted to go over all of those since you can't really even see them. And then of course, at the end of the video, I want to give you a few different features and things that you may not even realize are in iOS 13 that I can show you. So the first thing that is really what most people are looking forward to is the speed of app launching. So Apple has actually optimized app launching to be two to three times as fast. And also they're going to make it so that apps can be smaller so that when you actually need to download them, it takes up less data. And while we may not see any of these optimizations until the final release, they should be in the final release. In fact, Apple flashed a slide up with all of these different optimizations during their keynote in June when they showed off iOS 13 to begin with. So I wanted to go over some of them and just, explain them to you. Now I am not a developer. I have worked on different code and things, but I am not generally a developer. However, I want to go over each one of these things or just run through them quickly to explain what Apple's doing in the background. So some of them you may be able to understand you may not, but just know that they're all there to make things more efficient and faster. So one of them is an improved kernel thread schedule. The kernel is basically the, the main code behind the OS. So improved kernel thread scheduler DL YD three closures. That's one I was not able to even find much information on. They've also improved some of the system frameworks. They've also got more efficient shared cache, improved background process efficiency. So that would mean while you're working on something in another app, maybe it's doing something in the background. Hopefully it's more efficient, uses less power, things like that. Also compiler improvements. When you actually create an app and there's, you actually have to compile it so that your operating system understands it. There's improvements with that as far as efficiency, when the actual OS is interpreting that code also iCloud optimization. So of course, most of us are using some form of iCloud. And if you're using iCloud, there should be some improvements there, whether that means sending information back and forth with the files app or just saving your photos, things like that. It should be more efficient. There's now asynchronous metal shaders and metal is actually some of the graphics processes similar to direct X on windows, things like that. There's also swift code optimization. So swift is what you can create an app in. You can still use older code like objective C, but swift is the newer programming language that they're kind of moving towards, or you can create an app in now. There's also dynamic network switching. So maybe you're on your current home Wi-Fi network. It'll jump to another network more efficiently, or there may be something more to that. Maybe working with companies like Eero, or maybe they're going to make another airport. We don't really know. They haven't said all of that. Now, if you have a device that has a super retina display like this iPhone 10 S max, it also has reduced memory usage. So that's good for iOS 13. So you're not going to use as much memory. You're going to have more efficiency and better Ram management. So maybe you're opening an app and the next time you go into say the app store, it doesn't have to reload. So that should be better. There's some others like auto layout, high efficiency, memory allocation, APFS, cache delete. So APFS is the file system or Apple file system. Apparently there's some caching there, of course, and they're maybe deleting that more readily. We don't really know. They just give us that little blurb there. Then optimized fair play decryption. Fair play is one way that they help encrypt people that create apps. They can make sure that no one is taking their apps and giving them away for free if they charge for them and make a living off of that. So, so they've improved that. There's also launch time daemon throttling, prioritized page outs, and that is everything that should really help with efficiency when it comes to iOS 13. Now, maybe you understood a lot of that, or maybe you didn't understand any of it. Just know that in theory, it should make everything faster. And by the time this is released in September, everything should be much faster than iOS 12. And we'll test that out when it comes to launching apps and just using it in general on maybe even an older device and one of the newer devices, or maybe the iPhone 11 when it comes out. But I wanted to share with you 
a few features that you may not know exist in iOS 13 that I haven't really seen many people talk about. So I wanted to show you a couple of those. The first one has to do with photos. Now you may or may not have seen this, but let's go into photos and in the photos app, if you go to the photos button in the bottom left, and then you'll see select up here or a plus or minus in the upper right. If you hit the plus or minus, you can zoom in to the actual photo or you could 3d touch or, or haptic press that photo. But you can use this little zoom to get really close or back out, zoom back in, back out. You can see all of your photos a lot more easily. So that should really help if you want to zoom in and kind of figure out where your photos are. Again, you can 3d press or haptic press to get a better view as well. Now, one of these is sort of a feature that people have been saying uh, they want to turn off, but it's actually a nice feature if you know how to use it and what it's there for. So let's go into notes. Now you'll see I'm in the notes app and I've written, hi, how are you today? And if you use three fingers and tap the display, you'll get a new dialogue on the top. And this is annoying some people that play games that require three fingers. Probably they'll have a way to turn this off in the future, but right now in this particular version, they don't, but we have undo and redo and copy and paste and things like that. So if we tap the display and just move our fingers to the right or left, we can undo or redo. So you'll see <laughs> there's not a whole lot there. There's a little line there. When I redo, that must be what I copied last time. And then swipe to the left, we have undo. And then if I tap here, maybe select, we of course can copy and then tap down here, tap with three fingers and paste with that button. So we could do this with a swipe or tap of these buttons. They all sort of do the same thing and it's sort of redundant, but I do like that it's better to swipe your fingers instead of shaking the device. It's just a newer way to do that. Now, all throughout the OS, when you're replying to email, when you're in notes, you have some new rich text formatting. So let's go into mail and I've created a new message. And under this new message, if I just tap down here, like I want to type the message, what you can do is hit this little arrow here on the top of the keyboard at the top, right, and then hit the a, a, so the uppercase and lowercase a, and now you have all of your formatting. You can change your fonts. So later on, we'll be able to add a bunch of fonts, but it looks like we've got a bunch of system fonts already. So if I wanted to just pick a font, for example, maybe we'll just pick Helvetica new. We'll hit that. And then we can make the text larger, smaller, change the color of it to whatever we want. Maybe we'll pick red and we've got all of our different formatting there. So you can do this all throughout the OS now. And then now if I type hi, you'll see that it's red. So it's really nice. And it's a feature that's all throughout the OS that a lot of people don't really know is even there. And all of these optimizations make everything faster. And then the added features make things a little more usable and like having a full computer in your pocket. The same is true for the iPhone SE. This phone feels just as fast doing almost everything, unless you're loading a game, that's where you'll see the slower load times. But other than that, it feels very optimized and fast overall, just scrolling through anything from music to the app store to a web page. There we go. It just feels like it's a fully usable phone. In fact, if you have an iPhone SE, you get iOS 13, you may not need to update because it does everything you want with the exception of maybe some of the better cameras, and the FaceTime sensor, this phone is fully capable, just like the newer phones. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into the new features and changes with the iOS updates. And let me know what you think in the comments below. Which one is your favorite? Did you know any of those different, uh, different new features or hidden features that I haven't seen very readily posted anywhere. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description as I always do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you'd like to see more of these videos as soon as they're released, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. So that was a lot of information to cover without seeing a whole lot. So thank you for watching until the end of the video. And if you're seeing this, I'm thinking of doing a comparison between the oldest phone, maybe the iPhone SE and the 10s max, or maybe I'll wait until the iPhone 11 is out. But would you want to see a comparison between iOS 12 and 13? And do you think iOS 13 is going to be like iOS 11 where it's full of bugs? I'd love to know what you have to say in the comments below. I really appreciate it. And thanks again for watching.